So good morning and thank you for inviting me to speak today on the theme of how the churches can help tackle poverty and indeed in the end end up with long-term solutions. One of the coalition government's first contributions to public life in this country was to introduce the concept of the big society. This was based on a series of government policies which sought to encourage individuals and voluntary groups to be enabled to be engaged within our communities and to care for each other. Now, unlike many government critics at the time, I have no objection to the concept of the big society. Why? The church has been doing it for over 2,000 years, friends. We have been the big society. However, the government's promotion of the big society concept, friends, was followed almost immediately by the comprehensive spending review. We are seeing cuts to valuable public services where investment actually is needed. I have noticed the impacts which these cuts actually are starting to have on essential services. These include children's services with cuts to the Sure Start program, projects for older people, and initiatives to help those who are unemployed. I'm particularly concerned with the rise of youth unemployment. In this context, we need to consider what the church actually can do at every level to tackle poverty. What can we do to make a real difference and one which will actually have a lasting impact? And I want to suggest the task of all the Christian churches in England is to work for the well-being of the nation. Not just the people inside its congregations, but the people outside its walls. We must not maintain our own comforts and ease of life by condemning others to live lives of discomfort and hopelessness. I believe it's at the local level that churches can have the best and the most long-term effect on tackling poverty. That is because we have a wealth of experience and skill in serving local communities. This has often been built up over decades of Christian witness and active support to people in the local community, particularly the lonely and the vulnerable. Often the churches have been the only organizations to have done this and have built up a unique insight into the needs of their particular area. And also from the research which the Church Urban Fund has recently commissioned, that it is those churches who most seek to meet local needs are, and I quote, most likely to take risks to help those in poverty. I have seen this at first hand from my visits to parishes throughout the northern province. I have seen parishes undertaking excellent love in action, projects to tackle poverty, including providing debt counseling, creating training and apprenticeship schemes, and mentoring support and employment opportunities. And one of the best ways in which we can tackle and sustain and take sustainable steps to tackle poverty is by learning from each other and by building up effective partnerships. This is what this conference is about today. Remember that with God, all things are possible. Therefore, God makes the impossible possible. So in the power of the risen Christ, this is an Easter tide. Let's do all we can to challenge the evil of poverty and in so doing, transform lives. We are in the people processing business to see them transformed from glory to glory and tackling poverty I'm afraid is an absolute key for a healthy and living church.